So hello everyone, Grocery here, welcome back. Today we've got another episode of the Unhuntables podcast series with Christopher. Hello. And we're hunting through two P coins today, looking for NIFCs, territories, anything else really that we can find. Um, all the details of what we're looking for is in the description. Um, and yeah, I was um, a little bit lost for what we should talk about today, but I remembered that I have submitted a freedom of information request to the Royal Mint. Now, essentially, because it's a public body, you can actually request information um, under the Freedom of Information Act of 2000 and something. Um, and I've had a reply. Um, can you believe it? So what I requested was actually a copy of um, all the alternative coin designs that were considered for 50p's and £2 by the Royal Mint Advisory Committee. So what happens is when there's a new design, isn't it? They, they all... Um, yeah, so they the, they designers. they contact a bunch of in-house and external um, artists uh, to ask them whether they would like to design a coin for this. And they give them a brief understanding of what they want the coin to to celebrate um, and some key points if there are certain things they want on the coin. And then the designers submit their designs anonymously, and the Royal Mint Advisory Committee picks a design. That's right. Um, so. What but happened... what's important, what they, what they didn't send you back, though, I think is worth stressing of as course. well. Of course. So they replied, and they said that... Uh, let me grab the page up here so I can read it. So what they you said... You didn't even bait them, Gracie. They said, here's, here's some of the designs <laughs> for the £1 coins, and you can't have anything else. <laughs> what they said was that we can confirm that we hold information falling within the scope of your request. However, we are withholding the release of this information under Section 21.1 of the Freedom of Information Act. Essentially, what they're saying is because it's potentially still commercially sensitive, they don't want, yeah. obviously, it released into the public domain. Because apparently they have alternative uses for the designs that never get used, uh, such as, what did they cite? Uh, they said um, something along the lines of they still get used um, when it comes to... So yeah, from, uh, from, I remember on my whatever. VIP tour with the Royal Mint and then uh, the Change Decker event at the Royal Mint Experience, we were talking about the, uh, those questions asked about these alternative designs and they said that they do still use them to go back and use as reference points. So if you if they're designing a coin for something, they might go back and look at what uh, some previous designs have been submitted for a sort of yeah. inspiration or a starting point. Yeah, that's right. That's what they say. They say um, the Royal Mint is then permitted to utilise such designs and associated visual materials for a range of uses not just for coins so even where the designs are not chosen for coins as part of their initial assessment this is only one potential use so they still retain significant commercial value for the raw mint however what they did send me was a link to the raw mint museum uh, website which has some very interesting uh, documents that i'd never even come across before which shows some of the alternative designs for coins that were released 20 years ago or more. Uh, well, actually, they said it's supposed to be up to 20 years, but they've actually only got about um, 30 years because it goes up to 1993 or so. Um, but yeah, I thought we'd have a little look at some of the um, alternative designs that could have been for the Queen's portrait when it changed over uh, in 1984. Um, yeah. And yeah, we've got a long list of... Um, that was changing to her third portrait on UK coinage, wasn't it? That was it? changed into the third portrait, that's right. Um, and it really blew my mind, the fact that, you know, some of these designs could have been all we'd have ever known. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. As, as, as familiar are we, as we are with Raphael McClough's portrait, which is the design that was ultimately picked, so that any of these other designs could have been that design that we are regularly uh, used to seeing and the Raphael McClough portrait could have been one of these oh I've never seen that before <laughs> yeah. what it could have looked like that's it 100% but some of the um, artists that uh, submitted were uh, quite familiar as well as we were just talking about before oh which ones are they Gracie which ones did you recognise I recognised Arnold pardon me Arnold Machen who obviously yeah. has the uh, stamp design I recognise the, the Queen obviously really out of mention, design the second portrait of the Queen on coins. Is that news to you? I wouldn't say it's news to me, but I kind of never put that connection that it was the same person that did the stamp design, but there we go. Um, Recognise, obviously, McClough, because that's who ended up actually doing it. And apart from that, 
I'm yeah. struggling. <laughs> so there was also Philip Nathan, letter D. Uh, oh wait, what? Which one is it? I, don't, I, don't, I can't tell which one he did now. Uh, so there's there's oh, about I've got, I've got five or six for each designer. If you go to the next page. Okay. Um, so Philip Nathan, uh, who designed the uh, the first Britannias, right? Uh, which is kind of cool. So like the, the, the I think he he did the the standing Britannia, which we still see today, and the Britannia in the chariot, and uh, a couple of the other Britannias as they were going on. So it's kind of cool to see his yeah. name. So he only uh, actually Stuart, submitted one, to be fair. Yeah, Stuart Devlin, I recognise. I can't recall. Um, I think it was Aust- the Australian uh, platypus, twenty cents. So he might have done other of the Australian uh, dif- uh, uh, designs, the uh, definitive designs. But he also did one for I think it was no, oh, it was Singapore or Malaysia. It had like a swordfish on it, and again the ripply pattern is it, it, you can tell it's the, by the same designer um so yeah that, that was the um uh, our elderton rings a bell but i can't figure out i can't place in my mind immediately where i recognize the name from but uh no it's, it's, it's cool and it's interesting seeing the names from the, the, the they've got the, the, their names with like the royal canadian mint or hong kong and so they were obviously reaching far and wide as yeah. to uh, have a designer of um images of the queen on coins i think it's interesting there's a couple of canadians on there because obviously canada ended up later having their own uh, designers design the portraits of the Queen because they wanted a Canadian designer to design the, the I wonder uh, if any of these... on their coins. Which one was that? Was that... That was Walter, designer for oh, Two of them. Uh, J- is that Terry or Jerry Smith? I'm just trying to work out whether any of those ones actually ended up then getting used. I don't think any of designer oh. P did, but... But I... Oh, I, uh, yeah, Terry Smith. Uh, I... I'm very confused by this website. <laughs> I don't recognise it, to be fair. No, <coughs> it does look a bit like the McLeaf portrait, doesn't it? Hmm. But no, the um, the McLeaf portrait that was actually used was Designer F uh, Portrait 16, I think. And what I'll do is um, I'll put a couple of images as we're talking about them. Um, however, the yeah main point would be if you want to have a look at these i'll just put the link in the description so um yeah feel free to go and have a little look at these because i think they're really really interesting to be fair um yeah it's just it's cool seeing these um other portraits of the queen on coins because obviously we, we there, there is a range of different portraits that have been used over the years not just by uh, uk coins but uh, all the different parts of the world where the queen is head of state or have, that have been released so it's interesting seeing what what um how, yeah. how our coins could look very differently to how we're used to seeing them. Definitely. Take a look at um, designer F, number 18. That kind of looks like the the portrait that's on one of the £5 coins, I'm pretty sure. Do I actually have this £5 coin in front of me? Yeah. I'm sure that it's, it's the same as one of these. Possibly. I don't have. I don't think I have it to hand, but yeah, I'm sure that um, that was. It's used interesting on one how of the some pounds. some are just showing like the head up to the neck, and some have got her shoulders in, and some have got a, go, go a bit further down. Um, yeah. The different the sl- the variations in the angle that the way the queen sat in. Some um, of them look nothing like the queen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't want to be rude, but um, <laughs> designer, see what are you on about? That looks like a fake coin. <laughs> Or d- designer E number thirteen. What on earth is going on there? Or fifteen? Designer, designer e. e. Who is designer E? They need to. Um... E thirteen. Yeah. Designer E was. Um... I can't read the name. Miles. No, it says Miss S- Miles. C Gun. <laughs> Miss C Gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not as impressive as some of the other designs. No, it's weird though how some of them kind of look a bit like they've been generated by AI, like the Dali Three generator. Here we go. Gregory's new obsession is uh, AI. Well, I don't think it's my new obsession. I think it's it's the the new thing that's going to be as big as the internet was. I know, lots of people are excited about it, but uh, I, I I I listen to lots of podcasts and things, and I still hear more about AI from you than anywhere else. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think that it's going to become as popular as the internet. To be fair, eventually, but there we go. Um, but yeah, um, I think those are pretty cool. There's also um, I don't think I have a link up to it now, but we 
Uh, I think I showed you some of them before, actually. They have also on there some of the um, uh, designs for the re... What am I trying to say? When the pound coin came out in 1983, some of the potential designs that could have been... Um, just trying to see whether I've got a picture of it. But yeah, some of those coins... Um, yeah, like this one. Uh, I'll just send it to Christopher again, just for your benefits, so you can see. But um, some of those designs look pretty cool, don't they? Um, like the bottom yeah. one, the map, the outline of each um, each of the nations. You've got loads of different designs. I see, you see birds, mm -hmm. lions, various other bits and bobs. Don't know what the uh, fourth row is, but uh, yeah. Cool. That's um yeah. yeah, what I thought was quite interesting. And I'll leave the link to all of those, as I said, in the description so you can have a, a good look for yourselves. And importantly, you you are planning a video. Yes, I will do as a little as, video. As soon as you can get Chat GPT to stitch it together for you. Um <laughs> you expect to see a video from Grossy covering those in more detail. Of course. So yeah, we'll go through probably I don't know about all of them, but we'll go through lots of them and see uh see what the deal is and have a little dig through this document and see if I can pull out some of the interesting uh, interesting bits. Yeah, um, we've long said it's been yeah. a long, long time since there was an open public competition to design UK coins. So, like the Olympic fifty P's were all designed by the public. Um, the technologies two pound coin, the um, um, some of the other definitive designs as well, the shield of the Royal Arms, that was all by a public uh, competition. So, I think uh, that's probably the only chance that many of us will get to try and get a design on coins, unless you are already uh, a gifted artist uh, that's a uh, has a body of work that you, you can send to the room and say, oh, please contact me next time you want to design for a coin. Um, yeah. But uh, it's been a long time. We did think at one point that we were going to get it for the new definitives, but uh, sadly didn't happen. But uh, I think we'd both be kind of keen to contribute towards that, wouldn't we, if, we, if there was a competition to redesign a coin? Of course. I think we'd all um, all have a little go. Yeah. Do you think you'd, do you think you'd be very successful, Gracie? <laughs> no. I wouldn't no. be at all. I think that... Um, <laughs> My artistic flair would be not a good match for the demand. Well, you said you could have designed the, the NHS 75th birthday fight yeah, well, 50p. Yeah, well, that's... I did say that. <laughs> so you, what you're saying is you could design a coin you don't like the look of. Imagine that. No. <laughs> if, you, if you made a design you didn't really like and it got picked, you, you'd have to complain about the design that you submitted. But what I'm saying is, I and I still stand by, the fact that you could literally open up paint on your computer, type out that design, and then just <laughs> do it. And it's literally just written words. Uh -huh. um, so I think the, the yeah. words were carefully picked, I'm sure. Oh, know, yeah, sure obviously. The designers yeah. spent lots of time thinking about what words they wanted to best reflect. Uh, the or NHS, they just um, so. put into chat GPT, think of words that describe the NHS. <laughs> Not everyone is as lazy as you, Gracie. So, um, yeah, the, the, it, it, you would have, when you have your initials, your little grossy initial on the, on the coin, you'd also have to put in brackets chat GPT. As oh, well. yeah, what you could do is you could come up with words that describe the NHS in the same way that it does on the coin, but have the first letter of each word spell my name. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. That'd be a bit like think... the um, Alan Turing coin. That would have been cool for that, like a little code. Yeah. yeah. There you go. See, there's a couple of ideas you've already had off the top of your head. Mm. We need this. We need an open public competition to, to design a coin and a coin to go into circulation because surely that's every coin collector's dream to design a coin and have it circulating in everyone's hands and be able to find it in change. That would be amazing, right? Yeah, no, definitely. And especially if it became like a rare, valuable coin. Yeah, like, true. And then it would be... But that, that is Renowned. the question I pose to people, and people have said wildly different answers. Would you prefer if you designed a coin and it went into circulation? Would you want it to be rare and a really sought after coin, 100%. or would you like it to be really common and for lots of people to see your work? No, I, I'd want it to be rare as yeah, rare as anything. Really? Mm, Imagine if you designed I, the cute gardens. I thought, I thought you'd want it as common as muck. So every time you get handed <laughs> change from a, from a person who um. Uh, like, oh, you a hundred percent with me. Oh, did you know that coin there? <laughs> By the way, I designed that. And you get no, cash again, right? I imagine okay. how proud you would be if you were the one that designed the Kew Gardens fifty. Oh yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah. I, I thought you would you would you would let, you would relish every moment every time you <laughs> see someone with change in their hands. Yeah, someone um, 
busking on the street, you'd be right over to the guitar case going, oh, look, there's what I designed. Look, I designed this coin here. No, I think what I would say is if I was going to be the new designer of a coin, I would either rather have designed the definitives or have designed a really rare coin. I wouldn't want mm-hmm. to have designed like a middle ground common commemorative because then no mm. one knows about it because it doesn't get any like media coverage because it's no, not rare at all. But on the other hand, not as many people. I think you find Matthew didn't got a ton of coverage for his um, definitive. Yeah, design. but no, but that was definitive. What I'm saying is, like, oh, okay. the the designer of say, I don't know, what's a medium like the Battle of Britain 50p, that sort of medium rarity, which was designed by. No idea. <laughs> when in doubt, say John Bergdahl. He designed so many coins. <laughs> Should we find out? And then we'll end the video. Battle I don't of... think it was John Bergdahl. He's Battle of Hastings. That's why I've, his, his name jumped to, jumped to my head. But he does. He has designed a lot um... of coins. Gary Breeze. Oh, of course. He, I bet he, he, um, do, um, I he, bet did, he breezed um... through that design. <laughs> he did, I think he did the Captain <laughs> Cook two pound coins as well. I think. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be really embarrassing if it wasn't him, and I've just plucked up some coins and I've attributed him to coins that he didn't actually do. I think he did, though. I think it was Gary Breeze. You take that bet, Grossy? Uh, just have a look. Uh, doesn't say on Google. Oh, designer Gary Breeze. Yep, there we go. <laughs> there we go. I got something right. <laughs> That's it. That's, uh, cool. Right, let's get back to the two Ps, and hopefully we manage to find lots of interesting coins. Right, and that is all the two Ps we've managed to find. There's the magnet. No non-magnetic 1999s. They were all uh, all magnetic. But we've got two 2017 shields, which are pretty okay. Slightly lower minted. But the main event is three Jersey two Ps. 2005, 2008, and 1998. I'll have a look afterwards and see whether any of those are um, of rarity. And... The best one, probably, is this Isle of Man from 1976 with a some sort of bird over and out by the map of the Isle of Man, which is pretty cool. Not in the best condition ever, but still uh, pretty nice. So yeah, um, go and check out Christopher's video as well, see what he managed to find. Um, I think hopefully four should do it now. Hopefully four should do it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.